Quick disclaimer, I am an Aquarius, so apologies in advance. Hey book besties, my name is Angie, this is my channel, maybe I'll read today, where we talk about books that I may or may not have read. Today, today, today? Not tomorrow, definitely not yesterday, it's too late for that. But today, we're going to be doing a tag. We're going to be doing the anti-TBR tag. I saw this going around on booktube for a, a long time, but I decided to finally do it myself because I like to, to be a hater. I'll link the original video slash original channel in my, my thingy below, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna get into it, okay? First question is a popular book that everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. For me, that's literally any book talk book. Again, I am an Aquarius. So whenever a book gets too much hype from too many people, I immediately lose interest in it because there is no way a book is that good that everybody likes it. It just, it just doesn't add up. Statistically, it doesn't make sense. Specifically, a book that I have no interest in reading, and I don't know if it's like universally loved. I think there's like mad mixed reviews about it, but it is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Miss, Miss, Miss and the reason why I have no interest in reading this is because I found out that there was a subway fingering scene and I was like, on the New York metro system, on that subway, absolutely not. That is, that is disgusting, dude. Okay, the subways have gotten slightly better because they finally started cleaning them because of COVID. But like, on, on that transit system, at least be said in DC, their subway system is significantly cleaner, in my opinion. Like, not here, not here, not like this. And then I also found out that like, I don't remember the character's name, but the one who's in the past, she's Asian, question mark, and she she experienced a hate crime on the subway, and when she tells the little white girl about it, the little white girl kind of brushes her off and she's like, that can't happen, it's 2020, 2020, racism doesn't exist anymore, this is Brooklyn, where racism doesn't exist, this is a safe haven for, for everything, and so that shit kind of pissed me off. I mean, I guess it kind of aligns with the fact that Casey McQuiston is a white person, question mark. She's mad comfortable writing Latinos though in her first book. So I don't know if she's like a white passing Latino or if she's just a white person, but she was mad comfortable with that too. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really vibe with that book either. But it just kind of annoyed me that like the, the character of color out of a place of discomfort and hurt, you know, reaches out to her white partner and was like, hey, you know, I got beat up on the bus or on the on the train due to the fact that I am an Asian lesbian. And her white partner was like, this is Brooklyn. Ra racism doesn't exist anymore. Now, if we were in the South, that would have been that would have been believable. But 2020 Brooklyn? Absolutely not. I was like, man, shut up. So yeah, I'm never going to pick that book up. Kind of turned off from that author generally, but you know, I might pick up the Sarah Wheeler book. I've heard it was actually good, so. Second question is a classic book or author that you have no interest in reading. For me, I feel like I'm trying really hard to get into classics. I really want to be intellectual for once in my life. I would like to experience my brain working at least once. I think that would be a cool experience. So I'm generally open to classic books. I'm, I'm generally open to trying classic books. Will I succeed in them? Probably not, but I'm open to trying. My only exception is Lovecraft because listen, I know most if not all classic authors were probably racist. However, he was like racist racist because he named his cat a super not cool name. You can Google it. Super messed up to name your cat that. And super messed up to have the, uh, the ideology to be like, yeah, I'm gonna name my cat that and it's gonna be funny. It's gonna be cool. So I, I'm, you know, I'm just like turned off by any of his books. I don't care if they're super scary. I don't care if they're super effective. I'm just not into it. I will consume media that's based off of his books, you know, like the Lovecraftian like monster shit. I'll, I'll do that, but I won't pick up any of his books directly. Question three, an author whose books you have no interest in reading. I have a list. First, anything Colleen Hoover. I've read Verity and I thought it was fine. I would have I would have ended it a little differently to make it more effective. I think she put on too many plot twists and then it kind of lost the effect. But not only that, 
Her covers are so ugly. I don't understand how people continue to pick up those books because I'm a 100% person who judges books by the cover and that shit looks like she just decorated it on canvas or like, the, you know the rainbow text that you used to be able to do on, on Microsoft Word? That's what it looks like with the like clip art, birds going across, the, it just, it's ugly. I don't understand how she's so popular just on the fact that her covers are so fucking ugly. Another author, Riley Sager or Sager, I'm not sure. Either way, his books are ugly. I have no interest in picking up a book that is literally just a picture of a corner of the room slapped with a Instagram filter on top. LED lights just to make it purple instead of like regular yellow light. It's just ugly. I just, it's so bleh. Other, other book, I don't know the author's name. I just know it by, by sight. The Shatter Me series with the little eyeball, little crusty eyeball with like uh, eyeshadow makeup on it ugly. I don't know how they have nine books in the series and they never improved on the covers. I have no idea what the series is about. I have no interest in learning because that cover is so ugly you will never catch me holding that crusty eyeball in my hand. Absolutely not. And then the other author that I have on this list is Sally Rooney. Her covers are fine. I don't much care for the sad unlikable girl genre just because you know, I lived through that era. I realized having a more positive outlook on life or trying to at least like step by step, you know, and being more understanding of other people and, and their situations leads to a generally better life. That sad girl, sad unlikable girl genre does not, has not understood yet. This is not a call out to people who enjoy these books. I just feel like the characters in those books are usually like, everyone hates me and so I hate everyone in return. Everyone is disgusting because I'm disgusting. You know, it's just like not good vibes. And so it's like, I experienced that, I grew from that, I have no interest in returning to that mindset. Even for a 200 page book, I'm good. Question four is an author you have read a couple of books from and have decided that their books are just not for you. The first is Stephen King. I can't stand this man. This man haunts every Barnes and Nobles and I can't stand this man. I've read a few of his books. I thought most of them are fine and a lot of them border on racist. I know he's like a cool dude on like Twitter apparently, but I feel a type of way about a man who insists on writing about the 70s because it feels like he does it as an excuse just to be racist or homophobic in his writing and the excuse is like it's, it's appropriate to the time period. There is only so much I can take that's appropriate to the time period before I'm like, you seem a little too comfortable writing like that. Hmm, you know what I mean? It's also how I feel about white actors who do movies that are like based in either like slavery times or Jim Crow times, and they seem a little too comfortable saying the N word. You know what I mean? Yeah, they might just be a good actor. But at the same time, a little part of me is like, well, why did you want this role? Why did you want the excuse? Why did you want the opportunity to say these slurs and to be these, this racist to, to a black person? What's going on? What's the truth? You know, like, I understand it's acting, it's their job, but also if I had the choice of being like, hey, here are two movies you can do. One is you're a princess in a castle and you're having the time of your life, or you can be racist. I would be like, hey, you know what? I'll do the I'll do the Disney special because I'm not I'm not gonna do that. That's not me. That's not ever gonna be me. I don't care how much you want to pay me to say some slurs on camera. It's not gonna be me. However, a lot of actors in Hollywood seem to feel differently, and I guess that's just interesting to note. And I think it's also interesting to note how comfortable Stephen King is writing slurs in his book. And so it's just. It's just interesting to me. And so I know he, he seems very cool on Twitter, but at the same time, I'm like... Also, the last few books that I've read from him have just been incredibly lazy, in my opinion. Like, to tack onto this whole is he racist agenda that I have, a lot of his books that I've read, like, have this buildup that is seemingly very interesting, and then the resolution is just like a watered-down version of, like, some kind of mythos or like lore from like a, a community of color. The only two examples I have off the top of my head is one pet cemetery, super racist, to make like the the whole thing of like a Native American burial grounds that's haunted. We don't have to get into why that's a, such a racist trope, but I'm sure you can find something online, but it is.
And then the other book that had this that I had a huge problem was The Outsider, which could have been a really great story about doppelgangers or something like that, except all of a sudden he just like flipped the switch and then it started becoming about the Kukui, which is like the Latin American boogeyman. Known of many different names, but I think specifically in that book he used Kukui. And so I guess that's a spoiler, so apologies, but like don't read that book. Because it was only the Kukui in name, like the lore, you know, wasn't there. It was just like something he made up and then he slapped the name Kukui on it and then he had a random Mexican character who spoke very broken Spanish even though he was supposed to be fluent in Spanish. Like I think in the book, instead of just saying El Kukui, he said the El Kukui, which like if you knew Spanish, you knew that El is already like the the, the in whatever. And so it was just like clearly poorly researched, poorly written, poorly done, and lazy because he was like, I wrote this whole 800 page story and I don't know how to end it. He went on Google, he went on Wikipedia on that page that talks about all the different folk folklore throughout the world. He, he had a number generator on a different screen. He clicked that, it said 88, he scrolled down, El Cucuy, and he said, perfect, I don't even care. And he said, oh, I need to make this believable. I had a I had a character, his name was John, now he is Juan. That's fine, I don't care, I don't care. I also don't like how people praise him because his whole thing is like, oh, no matter what you do, just write every day. And I don't think that's a good piece of advice. Even if you're writing like 20 pages a, a day, if those 20 pages are garbage, those 20 pages are garbage, you wasted your time. I don't care if it's about, oh, practicing your work. It's not practice because your shit is garbage. And then because Stephen King has such a big name to him, that garbage gets published anyways. And then we get stuck with books called, we get stuck with books like The Outsider or Pet Cemetery or whatever else. The, the Shining was also really boring. I don't even, I don't even know what it's about. The movie was good. However, I will say I do have a copy of Misery on my shelf that I want to get to. Only because I remember as a kid, my mom used to watch a lot of Stephen King movies. I remember Misery being especially wild, and so I want to read the book. But I think that book is probably different than all his like supernatural horror books, because at least that one is just like about a, a fan who goes too far. You know, he doesn't have to rely on other cultures to write the story for him. I have gone too long about my Stephen King hate, so I'm going to move on. Next author that I've read and I have no interest in pursuing other books is Allie Hazelwood. I did a whole video ranting about how much I disliked The Love Hypothesis, but I disliked lo The Love Hypothesis. I thought that was such a bad book. All her upcoming books seem like fanfic of The Love Hypothesis, which is already fanfic about Star Wars. So it just kind of seems like what's the point in reading all of her other books because if you read The Love Hypothesis, you kind of already got all the other things that she's going to come up with because all of them seem to be the like grumpy man, sunshine, immature woman child trope which I mean I get that it's a trope and I get that people enjoy it but it's not a trope for me. I personally think that a man who hates everyone but you're the only exception and he's only nice to you is a huge red flag that is not sexy to me. That just shows that he's not well-mannered, not polite, and that that you're, you become not only his partner, but also his caretaker and his, his basically like his dog trainer because you have to be there to make sure he doesn't like attack other people. I just don't think it's good. I think it's a huge red flag. It's not for me. And knowing that she writes all of her books under this trope, not, not it. The next person on this list is Penelope Douglas. Listen. I know that her whole thing is is writing bully romances and I know that bully romances are problematic to begin with because again it kind of falls under that like I hate everyone except I, I kind of don't hate you but I'm gonna hate you anyways kind of thing which in my opinion huge red flag borderline abusive. I personally think this is the hill I choose to die on. She is harming society and the hold that she has on TikTok is so concerning to me. I'm only 27 years old and you guys have me acting like I'm a 80 year old grandmother on YouTube saying you can't be reading these books. This is gonna harm you in the future. You gotta take care of yourself. You gotta have a fuck you account where you, you have money stored away just in case you gotta leave a situation. You have me acting like 60 years older than I actually am because y'all just can't let go of Miss Douglas's work. I have read Punk 57, garbage, hot garbage. And all of the Eminem, uh, references just add on to the heap of garbage. I can't believe that we as a society are, oh, well, I'm not going to include myself in that. I can't believe y'all as a TikTok society are still hyping this book up because this book is just not okay. I also read The Uncle Boyfriend Love Story. 
not okay. <laughs> I was tricked into reading that. I saw so many reviews saying, oh, it's so deep. Oh, it's so meaningful. Oh, it's so sweet. And I was like, I had no idea what it was about. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. I, I'll i try. The cover's kind of cool. There's like trees on it and shit. I'll try it. Okay, I read it in one day, but it was mostly because I was so horrified. I needed to see how it ended. But y'all have me messed up because you really hyped up a book where this girl hooks up not only with her uncle, but her cousin and her other cousin. That's not okay. I don't care if they're step uncles and step cousins. I'm sorry, in my household, a cousin is a cousin is a cousin. Shoot, if it's a family friend and I've known them for more than 10 years, that's a cousin. That's not okay. That's not okay. So it worries me that she has such a chokehold on people, not only because of the bully romance aspect, but because y'all were eating up a book about a uncle cousin love story. That's not okay. I'm banning you from all of your family reunions because that's not okay. I don't want to know what's going on in your mind. Next author, V.E. Schwab. I have a history with her. I think the concepts of her books are so interesting, but the execution of them always fall flat. And then the last person I have on this list is Silvia Moreno Garcia. She, same with Miss Schwab, like, Con conceptually, I think her book sounds so cool. But in execution, I just don't think like formal novel writing is for her. I've read Gods of Jade and Shadow and I've read Mexican Gothic. And both of those books felt more like a screenplay than a novel, if that makes sense. Like the, the descriptions in those books felt more like set design than it did actual books. And so I think she would be really great in writing TV shows or writing movies. I think that's really where her writing style fits. And I think a lot of her stuff are getting adapted, so that's great. But I just think she needs to cut out the middleman and like not write novels and only write screenplays because like that's that's where it makes more sense in my opinion. Question five, a genre you have no interest in or a genre you tried to get into and couldn't. Again, I'm open to most genres. I mean, unofficially, because this is not a real genre, but like the sad, unlikable girl genre, I don't like, I already talked about it. I'm okay with sci-fi. I have a slight aversion to it just because as opposed to fantasy that has no basis in reality, sci-fi has some basis in reality. So it makes it harder for me to imagine a world that's like ours, but also not if that makes sense. And I also just don't like technology because I'm 80 years old and I feel like sci-fi has a huge dependence on, on technology to tell the story and to move the plot forward. When a sci-fi book has like descriptions of like this computer and these knobs and these dials and this these lights and whatever, this machinery, I have no idea what's going on. I can't imagine any of that. In my head, it's just a, a blank wall and so then I get nothing from it. So it's just like, visualizing things is harder for me in a sci-fi setting than it is for other genres. I had to get up and get the book for the next question, so I don't know if the angle changed. But question six is a book you bought but will never read, and, and that's Dune. I was really ambitious when I bought this when the movie came out because I was like, oh, you know, everyone else is reading it. I'm going to be like everyone. Big mistake. Now just looking at it, it makes me feel sick. Why is it so big? What's it even about? It's about like a desert. There's nothing in a desert. How do you have 800 pages about a desert? It doesn't make sense. All, all there is is sand as, as shown through the cover. One day I'll probably pick it up and I'll try, but it's not, that day is not anytime soon because just looking at it makes me sick. Question seven, is a series you have no interest in starting or a series you have started and have DNF'd? Um, and so here I have several again, because I'm a hater by nature. The first is Shadow and Bone. I read the first book and I thought it was super poorly written and so then I was just like I'm not gonna continue well I started the second book also and I realized it was the same as the first book you know like the same the same steps as the first book and so I was like I have no interest in in going through this again because the first book was already work and so I DNF'd it because of that I also have no interest in starting Six of Crows or any of uh, Lee Bardugo's other books so I guess I could have added her to the list of authors that I don't want to pursue before, but I didn't because I forgot. But yeah, I have no interest in, in Shadow and Bone or Six of Crows or anything in the like Grisha universe. The next series that I started and have never finished and that I have no intention of finishing is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I understand that she was a child when she wrote this and so I'm not going to be too harsh, but I do think that her editor should have been a little more interactive, a little more communicative, 
a little more helpful in the writing process or in the editing process at least because this book was not written well. The premise is interesting. It's Romeo and Juliet plus a monster situation set in Shanghai in the 1930s. The premise is very interesting to me. But again, in execution, it was not done well. And I think the her marketing team relied too much on the fact that she was a young person who wrote an entire novel on her own and didn't focus enough on actually making the book readable. I felt it was it was a lot more telling and not showing and a lot of the like world building or like the historical world building kind of felt like she was just like rewording, regurgitating stuff that she learned in class as a college student. You know, it felt like she wrote an essay for homework about 1930 Shanghai and she said, okay, cool. And then included that exact essay into the book. So a lot of the parts felt a little more like academic-y as far as a YA novel can sound academic-y. And then the other parts was just like a lot of telling, not a lot of showing. It just wasn't super effective for me. I have no interest in pursuing the series. But again, I know she was just a child when she did that. I'm sure in a few years when she gets more practice on her writing, she can hone her skills and that'll be great. And I'm sure she can be a very good author and writer in the future. I just, I just think that her team kind of set her up for failure because they didn't do the work in making sure her book was readable and only really focus on the fact that she was so young and she was on TikTok and they were like, we can sell this. Which I mean, capitalism baby, because that book is mad popular and they sold it. Like they didn't just sell it, they sold it. So I mean, I guess like fuck me because everyone else seems to love it. Another book, I have not started it at all. I have no interest in starting it and that's Laura Olympus. I just think the art is so ugly. All the characters are so ugly. The character design is just like, Oh, Hades, he's blue, I guess. Fucking Apollo, is he the god of war? I don't know, whoever whoever the god of war is, he's red, because that makes sense. You know, it's just, it feels lazy, and I don't, I don't understand how people, like, eat it up. The character design looks like they just went on pit crew and just, like, messed around for 30 minutes, and that's how they designed each character. Like, it's so lazy and so ugly. It has the same, like, same face problem that Disney has now ever since they made Frozen. Just same face, different color. Same face, different color. I don't care, it's so ugly. I'm never gonna pick it up. And last last question, a new release that you have no interest in reading. I'm just gonna say the easy ones. Gallant, V.E. Schwab, uh, Love on the Brain, Ali Hazelwood, Foul Lady Fortune, Chloe Gong. I have no interest in picking up these books or anything from these authors. I tried to look up online like other new releases that are coming out that I have no interest in. It turns out I don't have a lot of interest in any of them. The way that I navigate online book communities is very... it's just me. I follow people on Bookstagram, I read their reviews, but I'm, I feel like I'm never actually like on top of any trends or on top of any like actually like anticipated highly anticipated books that other people are like raving about which is really great for me personally because i don't feel pressured to read books that i would otherwise not be interested in however it's kind of a hindrance in this whole like booktube online content kind of thing because i don't know what's trending and i have no interest in knowing what's trending i'm gonna just keep reading the books that i want to read and if they're anticipated or not i don't care <laughs> so what i can say is any new release that i'm not interested in reading is basically all of them except for the few that i'm actually anticipating you know i don't keep track of of new releases in that way so what i can tell you is the one book that i am anticipating is Babel by rf kwong and i really hope it's good i'm really scared that yeah, I'm I'm mentally hyping it up too much. Sorry if I hated on your favorite authors or favorite books, but I feel like if you've seen my other videos, this is kind of expected. I'm very critical of, of popular things because I feel like they should be criticized. Or, or not like criticized in a, in a harmful way, but I feel like they should be looked at with a critical lens. You know, it's not enough to just be like, oh, this book is really popular, I'm gonna love it too. It's, it's important to be like, oh, this book is really popular, but why is it popular? Why, what are people overlooking just to continue to make it popular? And so that's why I'm here on the internet to, to poke a hole in all of your popular shit. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, if I if I didn't anger you too much with my little my little bookish opinions. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if not, that's fine. The the one thing about me is that if I choose a hill to die on it, bro, I'ma die on it. And that's it. <laughs>